The retinocortical segment converts light into a neural signal that goes from the retina to the primary visual cortex. This video reviews the prechiasmal portion of the retinocortical pathway, which carries the signal from the retina to the optic chiasm. Here is a cross-section of the retina. The inner part interfaces with the vitreous. The outer part interfaces with the choroid and the sclera. Light focused on the retina stimulates the photoreceptors, the cones and rods, where a transduction into neural signals first occurs. The cones concentrated in the fovea allow for high resolution vision and color vision. The rods concentrated outside the fovea gather dim light across broad receptive fields and enable low resolution vision in dim light. Damage to cones causes loss of high resolution vision and color vision. Damage to rods causes loss of night vision and peripheral visual field. Cones and rods depend on the underlying retinal pigment epithelium and the choroidal circulation, which play supporting roles in vision transduction. Damage to the choroidal circulation, the pigment epithelium, or the photoreceptors produces scotomas, or blind areas in the visual field whose shape corresponds to the lesioned areas. The rods and cones connect to bipolar, horizontal, and amacrine cells, which refine the signal. The refined signal reaches the retinal ganglion cells, which further refine the signal. Their axons in the retinal nerve fiber layer converge on the optic disc to leave the eye. For purposes of localizing disease, we divide the retinal nerve fiber layer into three nerve fiber bundles. The maculopapular bundle, marked with a number one on this picture, carries high resolution and color signals that come from the fovea. This bundle enters the temporal portion of the optic disc. The upper and lower arcuate bundles, marked here with a number two, loop over and under the maculopapular bundles. These bundles squeeze into the superior and inferior poles of the optic disc. The nasal radial bundle, marked here with a number three, is named for the fact that its fibers are oriented radially as they gather at the nasal portion of the optic disc. Damage to the maculopapular bundle causes central and centrocecal scotomas. Central scotomas arise when the axons from the fovea are damaged. Central scotomas also arise from damage to the outer retina in conditions like age-related macular degeneration. Centrocecal scotomas occur when damage involves axons arising between the fovea and the optic disc. Central and centrocecal scotomas arise commonly in toxic, nutritional, and hereditary optic neuropathies. Damage to the arcuate bundles causes visual field defects that have one border aligned to the horizontal meridian in the nasal field. Small lesions may show up as scotomas anchored on the horizontal meridian, sometimes called nasal step defects. Larger lesions cause scimitar-shaped defects anchored on the horizontal meridian and connected to the physiologic blind spot. The largest lesions of this bundle cause defects that occupy nearly the entire top or bottom half of the nasal visual field. They are called altitudinal defects. There are many causes of these arcuate defects, including optic nerve inflammation, ischemia, compression, increased intracranial pressure, trauma, and glaucoma. Damage to the nasal radial bundle of retinal ganglion cell axons is rare. It causes temporal wedge defects. Congenital optic nerve dysplasias are typically responsible for these defects. Within the optic nerve, the nerve fiber bundles maintain their positions until they approach the optic chiasm. At that point, axons that originated from nasal and temporal retina begin to separate. Axons that started in nasal retina cross in the optic chiasm to the contralateral optic tract. Those axons that started in the temporal retina do not cross and continue into the ipsilateral optic tract. Here you see how that happens to axons coming from the left eye. 
This rerouting prepares the way for a new set of visual field defects typical of lesions of the optic chiasm, the subject of Vision Pathway Part 4.